It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Thursday evening, April 26th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. My plan this evening is to identify the most reliable trading opportunities setting up for Friday's session. And I'm covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and the euro. Starting off this evening, crude is bearish but looks range-bound in the big picture. So my plan is to look for selling opportunities with buyer failures up at the highs while keeping an eye on seller failures for buying opportunities tomorrow morning. The S&P is bullish, but we finished today's session with a big double top at the highs, and that tells me to focus on failures down at the low of this short-term trading range for buying opportunities on Friday morning. How about that NASDAQ? Whew. Bullish, bullish, and more bullish as it spikes higher with a beautiful example of a short covering rally to finish today's session. And my plan is to look for buying opportunities with seller failures as price pulls back below the moving average. Gold is bearish and trying to finish a big measured move target tomorrow morning. And I'm using the new lower lows to create a hidden resistance level for selling opportunities tomorrow morning. Don't forget about that euro. Wrapping up tonight on the euro, the 6E is bearish with a strong move lower to finish today's session. But the real clue came from today's trading range, which tells me to stay patient for the most reliable opportunities to sell after a deep pullback tomorrow morning. Boy, I have a fantastic newsletter for you guys and gals tonight. There is no shortage of big moves and big opportunities setting up for Friday's session. I'm going to break this all down in about two seconds here. Before we jump into those charts, though, I want to remind you, if you're watching me on YouTube right now, you can find a detailed description of this entire strategy written out on my blog. Just head over here to SidewaysMarkets.com, and you'll find all the text right below today's video. I also want to remind you, if you have any questions about anything covered in this video, please remember to post them in the comment section below the video on YouTube. And if you like what you see, please help support this channel by subscribing and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I post another video. And don't forget, if you really want to stay in tune with everything we do here at School of Trade, head over here to the blog at SidewaysMarkets.com and make sure you join our mailing list. In the upper left-hand corner, all I need is your name and your email address, and I'll send you an email every time I publish something new. Now, in addition to my mailing list, don't forget about social media channels as well. I'm always publishing charts, links, and important updates on all of my social media channels. So whatever social channels you like to use, follow me on social in the lower left-hand corner for all those updates throughout the week. And how about some charts for tonight's newsletter? Yeah, very, very easy. I'm going to be with you guys tomorrow in the trade room at 8 o'clock Eastern time with all of our members. But if you're not a member and you still want to be able to get access to all those charts, don't forget you can grab all those charts by following that link right below the video on our blog here tonight. And then, of course, speaking of tomorrow's trade room session, grab that free pass in the upper right-hand corner and I'll shoot you an invite. Come out and join me as a guest in our trade room. That's right. If you're not a member, grab a free pass. Come out and give us a test drive. Join the trade room and see how we trade every day. Grab that free pass in the upper right-hand corner. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you can always post those in the comment section below YouTube. Or don't forget to hit me up on live support on the right-hand side of our website. All right, looking good. Let's jump right in. we got a lot to cover here tonight. Tomorrow is a Friday session. And, of course, as we go into the end of the week, we're also starting to go into the end of the month, right? So, of course only two trading days left in the month of April. We've been talking about this all week. If you've been with me all week here in the newsletter, we do expect to see increased volatility as we go into the last few drops of the month of April. It's also important to remember that tomorrow's a Friday. And as we get towards the end of the week, we oftentimes see larger unexpected moves towards the end of the session. So the moral of the story is on a Friday morning, Fridays are all about early in and early out in my world. I really don't trust that price action after 11 o'clock on Friday morning. So my job tomorrow, and I hope you'll take my advice on that, is going to be get to my desk early, 
get that money out of the market early and then wrap things up right do my weekly routine I've got a weekly routine that I give all my clients to make sure you get the most out of each week and then enjoy the weekend and come back and do it again tomorrow so that's the basic idea for tomorrow early in early out we do expect to see some more volatility because of the end of the month overall I would expect next Monday though to be a lot more of that volatility and don't forget I don't send out a newsletter on Friday night right so be aware Monday is the end of the month right and the volatility should be kicked up right as well as we go into it I'll talk more details on that tomorrow morning in the trade room and of course we'll cat will we'll tackle it as we see it tomorrow morning now the only real news tomorrow is this 830 GDP now as I mentioned earlier this week you know GDP sounds like a really big scary important news number but to be very honest with you it very rarely has a direct kind of tradable impact on the markets because GDP has so it's so broad and it really can't be applied to one specific sector of the market well whereas today's 830 news right we saw all kinds of craziness came out of the 830 news and some great trading opportunities that came with it so <coughs> tomorrow we do have news at 830 but I just don't expect to see a, a distinct correlation between that news and the financial markets will probably slip right through here tomorrow morning so really I'm not expecting much more than your normal end of the week and then end of the month kind of kicking up in volatility I'll be watching the news at 830 but I'm not gonna hold my breath for a big move off of it most important thing tomorrow will be do we see any headlines regarding OPEC or Russia do we see any headlines right all the stuff happening right around the world so we'll keep our eyes and ears over tomorrow but nothing really stands out other than early in early out right because of that Friday's trading session so now that you got the calendar ready for tomorrow let's dig into some charts here and get this ready now please don't forget I'm gonna go over all of my basic strategy here tonight with you but don't forget tomorrow morning I'll be in the trade room executing this strategy with all the entry patterns right that we talk about here every night so make sure you come out and join me as a brand new client or grab that free pass right like I mentioned before all right let's get going first starting off tonight on crude oil crude is bearish after a strong two-legged move off today's high but it's easy to see this market looks like a range first the sellers basically stopped in their tracks at today's low and you can see the higher lows and the lower highs I've got some trend lines coming in above and below and then don't even get me started on the 30 minute chart right glance that 30 minute chart right and this thing just looks like nothing but a range right now right so definitely looking like a range overall right on oil so you know I definitely have my eyes on a range but in the short term the bears have the edge so my plan is to focus on buyer failures up at resistance levels for selling opportunities tomorrow morning but I'm also going to keep an eye on buying opportunities if I see the sellers fail to extend this move lower maybe down around that measured move tomorrow right so only time will tell as far as this point but as of right now it's all bears here in my mind as we go into Friday's session right so bulls of course had control coming out of the session right uh, to to begin the day and then as you can see here right they of course they got their strength pullback strength right we get that two-legged move down right and bears take control now with those bears taking control you can easily see this trend line right kind of stopped everybody in their tracks right there to combine that with today's low and you can really see how the sellers struggled right to get this market to really continue its move lower so that tells me right away here now I've got to be worried about selling in this area waiting below right because obvious filled with support so really what it comes down to is there are really two opportunities for me right to earn a profit on the crew tomorrow one is going to be up at resistance levels overhead the second will be using this support as resistance below so the first one would be up and back down getting away from that rising support trend line the second would be slamming lower 
and then looking for the sell off of that, right, what was support now becoming a level of resistance. So let's break this down. What if price goes up? What if price goes down, right? What if price goes sideways? Now that you know kind of the big picture idea, let's put the plan together. What I really want to do is I really want to get this market up, see those buyers come over, let those buyers try to buy the pullback, and then look for a failure into seller strength, get that moving average over, right, and then grab the pullback, right, on the way down. It'll look a lot like this pattern right here, right, where we saw the where we saw the up, the failure, the move over, the pullback, right, and the go, right? You can see that pattern a mile away right there. I'm looking for a similar pattern right here to sell off those highs tomorrow morning. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about these buyer failures, seller failures, strength patterns, pullback patterns. Unfortunately, that goes a lot deeper of a dive than I have time for in this nightly newsletter. But not to worry, I want to make sure you get all the information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a free trading class. I'll put a link up here in the upper right-hand corner, right? You'll see that link open up there. Grab that free trading class, right? No obligation whatsoever. I want to make sure, though, that I give you the back background information that you need so you know when I say buyer failures or strength or pullbacks you know the entry patterns that I'm using right and then of course there'll be a little a little information icon up here right grab the little information icon and I'll be there for the rest of today's video right so grab that free class I'll I'll wait pause the video I'll wait for you grab the free class register for the free class right that way you learn the patterns and then you can get back to watching our video so bottom line is I want to see that failure strength pullback back down right that's one option or this is support right here right so I want to make sure I get through that support bring that moving average over and then use that support now as resistance right for a move going lower right I call this I call this a fake out breakout pullback what you want to do is you want to make sure that moving average gets down below right that trend line of support that we can combine that right those two levels of resistance again I'll talk a lot more about that fake out breakout pullback pattern in that free class right grab that link in the upper right hand corner so now that I have those right where are my targets going to be well, the target's easily going to be the measured move. If we go lower, right, if we go lower, that measured move, right, is my is my target now for those sellers. If we can get down to that measured move, most of the time, a measured move will give you a two-legged pullback and then a retest of that low. So I'll be waiting for more selling opportunities off of that bounce off the measured move if we go lower. Keep in mind though, if we do go higher here, right, and off those highs, right, then I'm gonna have to extend this measured move and it will probably be a little bit lower, right, on that chart. Same basic principle applies though, right, you'll have to adjust the measurement of that, of that measured move. Now, Let's talk about a possible buying opportunity here tomorrow. Obviously, one option would be a strength pullback strength, right? We've said a lot. We've seen a lot of these kind of reversals here on oil this week. So if we do see a strong move higher, and if those buyers can hold a pullback on this, then I'll gladly call this a bull market. I'm going to draw off the highs create a channel off that low and then I'm looking for and I call this a hidden channel I'm looking for right I'm looking for buying opportunities off of that hidden channel again grab that free trading class and you'll learn all about these different ways we can get in and out of these trades it's in the upper right hand corner grab that link in the upper right hand corner now another option would be for the buyers would be we finish up down to that measured move we see the bounce they do it again and then we see, right, the strength, pullback, strength. That is another option, right, coming off of that low. Because, again, it just the market looks like one big range. What you don't want to do, though, is if the market drops like this, you don't want to try to buy it at that point. It's just too strong of a bear trend. So wait for the seller's try again. Then look for, and, of course, I call this the two-try rule, right, wait for the try once wait for them to try twice right that'll get all the bears into the market 
then look for the failure, right? And the reason why the two try rule works so well is because it gets all those bears roped into their trades. And then if we do bounce off of that low, all the bears are trapped. They've got to get out of their positions and they'll become buyers, right? When they exit their positions. So that's going to be an option for us tomorrow, right? On the buy side. So relatively easy, right? Relatively easy, either sell high, or sell low, right? But wait for it to go lower than sell high. Also keeping an eye out, right, for two buying opportunities here, right, on the crude as well. I always want to be prepared for whether the market goes up, down, or sideways, right? I never want to get too locked in to any one direction because, as you know, by the time we come back in tomorrow morning, all hell could break loose and it could be completely different. I want to be ready for it, right? I want to have my plan in place. That way, when the market does move, all I'm doing is executing that plan. All right, over to the E-minis. These are interesting charts here for tonight. Wait till you see the old NQ. The S&P is bullish, obviously, with a strong move higher as the buyers try to finish a major measured move target for tomorrow morning. But look how we ended the session. Big wick and a big double top at the highs. What does that tell us? We've talked about this on the newsletter before. This tells me we have a trading range at these highs. And of course, a trading range tells me to focus on buying opportunities down at the low, right, with those seller failure patterns. If the bulls keep pushing higher in the overnight, then my plan is to use the channel as support for buying opportunities right tomorrow morning. It's pretty easy to see here, right? We have a pretty a pretty easy to find channel here beautiful rotation right back and forth it's a qualified channel which means if we do go higher here i'm going to keep using that channel right for buying opportunities tomorrow morning as we get up to that measured move this measured move by the way is a big big measured move coming off of that low it's the only thing really that fits right so you got 26 right 83 give or take a couple ticks up there and remember right this is actually back to the high of that trading range that we talked about earlier this week right so if you if you come in every evening if you watch my video every evening right you know that we have right the top of that range coming right overhead here so this is definitely going to be a big old target right a big old carrot at the end of the stick if you will for those buyers and so I want to be a buyer here on this. If the price keeps going higher, I'm looking for the buys off the low of that channel. But really my big clue here right now is strong move up, pulls back. You'll notice real quick here, you'll notice it never pulls back right to that 63 quarter reversal line. Big clue, big clue. I guarantee you there are a lot of orders that weren't filled because it never came back and touched it. What that means is if we do pull back, watch out. Right, there'll be a lot of buyers still waiting patiently there right, to get their orders filled. What I really want to go over, though, right now is, is this trading range. Strong move up, pulls back, looks like it's never going to stop moving higher. I would assume the S&P went higher kind of in sympathy of the NASDAQ. NASDAQ jumped up. Too bad the S&P is a different market, right? It's in the same market as the NASDAQ. Bottom line, though, is that double top tells me now to focus my energy on that low. That creates this as a trading range. Combine that with that untested reversal line, and now I know I want to be buying down here below the low of that range. I'm looking now for what we call the two-try rule. We saw some great examples of this on the euro this morning, and we're hoping to see some tomorrow. One try below that range. Two tries below that range. Remember to look for that lower low and then start buying that sucker back up into that range. If I can get that failure going back up into that range, sorry, if I can get the two-try rule, right, if I can get the sellers trying once, Sellers trying twice. And again, when I say two try rule, I realize a lot of you guys don't know what I'm talking about with that. That's why I have this free trading class in the upper right hand corner so I can teach you all these small details. So grab that trading class in the upper right hand corner and really get a deeper dive into these entry patterns. So two try rule is an option. What about if price goes higher here? Well, if price goes higher, why don't we grab that moving average and then let's look for what I call a fake out breakout pullback 
A fake out, break out, pullback is a two-legged pullback right into a rising trend line that comes above that above that range high that will be the buying opportunity here for tomorrow either at that low right or up at that high and again right i'm looking for if we do keep going higher here right we'll look for that pull back right can you use that move off of that right off of that channel low so get it down right buy it up breakout pullback right up above those highs now you'll also notice we have that measured move overhead you know who knows maybe we go higher here overnight right what if we jump higher here right now if we jump higher into that measured move remember most measured moves will bounce two-legged pullback do it again right so don't assume because we see profit taking at a measured move that this market's done going higher if the momentum is too strong going higher right now so it's very difficult for just one test of that measured move to reverse the market it does happen but it is really rare to see a mark completely turn its direction so, so if we do get that measured move hit look for that two-legged pullback right find some levels of support right it might be the high of that range could be the bottom of that channel right and we're looking for those buys right after that two-legged pullback for a retest of that measured move if things do get crazy tomorrow because it is a friday right i've got a runner target waiting up at that oh boy big round number at 2700 the 2700 just happens to be a coincidence for that runner target right so if we do head higher here tomorrow if things do get crazy i've got my eyes on that big round number right how do the sellers get involved tomorrow well first the sellers have to take control of this market to do that they've got to get a strong move down they've got to hold the pullback right pull back to the moving average and strong move through if I can get a strength pullback strength I'm gonna use this as a new channel and I'll look for selling opportunities up off the high of that channel right strength pullback strength in order for a market to reverse it needs to start with a strong move lower but as you can see every time we have a strong move lower what happens the buyers keep buying it right up so do not make that rookie mistake that i made too often when i was a new trader and assuming that just a strong pullback means a reversal a pullback is a pullback until it holds and rolls over that's when it becomes a full trend reversal when i do see a trend reversal it's almost always going to be a hidden channel and again i'll teach more about the hidden channels in that free trading course right but those hidden channels almost always are going to be right are going to be your most your, your, your best bet right when it comes to a trend reversal again to learn more about this stuff grab that grab that information icon right grab that information icon right in the right upper right hand corner and and grab that free trading class let's keep going how about some Nasdaq well I thought for a second there the Nasdaq was never going to stop this afternoon as you can see Nasdaq is very bullish as it completes a major measured move target and rotates up to the high of a multi-tiered bull channel this is a tricky one here got to use that multi-tiered channel to really get some sort of grip on what the structure really is this strength to finish this session feels exactly like that short covering rally we've been expecting this week and usually an explosive move like this will pull back just below the moving average just below the moving average and then it either creates a symmetrical second leg higher or it double tops and creates a trading range now if the bulls continue to push higher right i have a runner zone a runner target up there at 68.12 right 68.13 right so i'm definitely watching that runner zone target and really all the runner zone target is is if we do break through this measured move right that means the market has become irrational right what's one reason why it might become irrational because of that short covering rally we talked about earlier on this week remember we're going to build on every newsletter each week right so if this is your first time here watching tonight make sure you keep watching each evening because we started talking about these short covering rallies into the end of the month on monday and tuesday now here we are ending on thursday this is all coming to fruition now for us as we go into the end of the week so again if we do push through the measured move i've got kind of my 
my irrational target, if you will. And irrational markets happen all the time. They happen when uh, you know, unexpected news events happen. They happen when uh, they happen when, of course, the beginning of the week, right, is a bear move down, right, and now those sellers are exiting for a loss, right. So these are some of the reasons why this irrational markets happen. It doesn't really matter why, to be honest with you. All that matters is is you want to know where it's going. It's going up to that right up to that runner target, right? So trading that irrational market, I always want to have that runner target so I know where the market really wants to go next. Now, if the bulls continue to push higher, I have that runner zone waiting as a target, and I'll keep finding new channels by drawing off the highs. If the bulls finally start to pull back a little bit, right, then we look Look for the pullback and the second leg or the pullback into the trading range. So first of all, this big measured move, right, is a lot easier to show when I zoom out a little bit, right? So big leg up pulls back and go right there's my right there's my measured move that also helps me calculate my big runner target up there right at 6812 up uh, maybe 6813 if you want to be really nitpicky about that price i've got these lows right here and this is kind of tricky right because at first it looks like the spike in channel Right. As I mentioned last night, that was the plan if they held the pullback. Right. We're going to look for those channels. And you can see the buyers just kept coming in right, and buying the low of that channel. So if you watched last night's newsletter, you were locked and loaded on that plan on the NASDAQ today. But you'll notice, though, it blows right through the high. Right. It blows right through that high. And you're going, OK, what do we do now? So what I did was I added a midline to it. Right. Add a midline of the channel corrected it up and that's all it is right it's just a, it's what we call a multi-tiered channel and that just happens to line up right with that measured move now the most important thing for tomorrow though is that we do expect to pull back to at least retest the high whenever a market moves this much right on strength like this for whatever reason when this price pulls back it usually goes just below the moving average, just below that moving average. I like to look for the pattern right there. And then one of two scenarios. Okay, the first scenario is, is this becomes a measured move, right? It's a symmetrical two-legged move, which should line up pretty close to that runner target for you tomorrow, right? So that's, that's what likely happens. Now, what may happen tomorrow because of that measured move that we already have there, right, is we may end up running back to the high. It's almost a guarantee we go back to retest that high. No, nothing's a guarantee. But again, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, it almost always pulls back and does it again. Now, when it pulls back and does it again, if we don't run through that high, which will be that symmetrical second leg I talked about, then we start thinking trading range, right? And that trading range, double top, right? Find that bottom, right? That'll be your trading range. And then if we can see trading range now, now we look to buy below the low of that range, right? Two try rule, one try, two try, failure back up, or get that moving average, right? Get that moving average up above that range high, and then we can look for kind of my variation of a breakout pullback pattern. And again, in that upper right-hand corner of this video, you'll find a link to join that free trading class. I'll teach you more about that fake out breakout pullback pattern right in that video series. So that's the plan if the market goes range bound. Now, if the plan, if, if, if the market keeps going higher here now, right, keep going higher here now, now I've got to be a little more creative. I'm going to start looking for a larger channel, right? I'll look for that channel there, come off that low, right? And I'll look for kind of like a hidden channel, right, off of that rising support. So if we just keep blowing through these highs here, right, if we keep blowing through these highs here, eventually it will pull back. And then I'll have the ability to connect these highs. Again, right now, I don't know enough yet, right, but I'll be looking for those highs, right, come in and then I can start buying pullbacks right off of that low. Remember, when the market's bullish, our job is to find support levels to start buying, right? These are highly liquid markets. You don't want to buy high. You can get lucky every once in a while buying high. The problem is, I expect to be a trader for many, many years, and I hope you do too. It's difficult to get lucky consistently over a long period of time, 
right? Ever hung out in a casino very long, right? You'll find out. You can get lucky at the slot machine, right, when you sit down. But if you keep if you keep pulling the handle, eventually, right, they'll keep feeding you drinks, right? And eventually they'll give back all of that money and some, right? How do you think Steve Wynn uh, built those gorgeous casinos there, right? He didn't build it by giving away money, right? So we have to think of trading a lot like going to casino, right? Uh, the longer we keep trading, right, if we don't manage our risk, if we don't do the job correctly, we're going to give back that money eventually and some. So again, in a bull market, I want to be a buyer at support. Either that buying at support, either down right at that, at that channel low or down what I expect down just below that moving average right for the little seller failure right again grab that free trading course to learn more on that or right we see a double top here go sideways that creates a range right one try two try right back up in breakout pullback those are easy patterns just gonna wait and see if we can get them last but not least how do we turn bearish right what is it look for the bears tomorrow the bears are you crazy well, you know, sometimes crazy moves at the end of the day lead to big moves in the opposite direction, right? So remember, a pullback is first. Strong pullback is first. It's got to come over, right? Get below that moving average and hold that pullback. Remember, if we fail at that moving average, that then creates a great failure move back up to retest that high, right? So that will obviously be something to look for for the buyers. But if the bears can hold this, if they can take this sucker lower, Almost always you want to grab those lows up to that high, right? And then find those selling opportunities coming off of that high, right? That will typically be your most reliable trade on the way lower. And if we get something like that tomorrow, oh boy, this could be a big move back down. We got prior month levels we talked about earlier this week down at 64.21. I'm not going to go. I wouldn't hold your breath on that sell back to the prior month low, but I would definitely be open-minded to both sides of this market here for tomorrow. So pretty crazy move today on the NASDAQ to finish the day tomorrow. We've got a good plan ready for you guys. And don't forget tomorrow, trade room, 8 o'clock Eastern time. How about some gold here? We'll go gold and then euro. Gold is bearish with a strong break below today's trading range as the sellers try to complete a measured move target tomorrow morning. The bears have control, which means my job is to find resistance levels to combine with entry patterns on the way lower tomorrow morning. So my plan is to use these lower lows to create a hidden channel combined with a prior swing high for reliable resistance levels and potentially selling opportunities tomorrow morning. There's quite a bit on this chart, as you can see here tonight. Definitely not as much as we had right on the previous charts, but a strong move down. I'm looking at a measured move for a final target down around the 13 13 7 area at the same time here you'll notice we're just a little bit below that that prior low of day right so we didn't just sink lower right for a new channel so i'm going to connect these lows up to these highs and that creates some pretty interesting resistance up overhead as well at the same time i've got this strong move down i'm connecting those lows and you can see those little those little wicks up top look pretty good i'm going to tighten that up find that channel and use that as resistance overhead at the same time price action gap price action gap so you'll notice this doesn't happen very often. We don't see two back-to-back -back candles that don't overlap, right? We saw one right here. They quickly came back to fill that gap. That is a price action gap, a strong green candle followed by an equally stronger red candle that never overlapped, right? That means there'll be quite a few sellers waiting there up around that 13, 20.6 area. On top of that, I've got a reversal line here at 13, 22, which is the low of today's short-term trading range. So all of these levels are going to be great to use for selling opportunities off that, off that price action gap off the top of that channel right off of the reversal line right and off of the top of that channel now remember what will likely happen though is we go higher here we'll likely to be above the moving average so the key here is whenever we go above the moving average what happened here right we go above the moving average buyers confuse this now for being a bull market because that's what all rookies do 
right? Most, most new traders suffer from what I call the scalper's curse. And the scalper's curse means they pay attention to such a fast, fast time frame because all they're doing is trying to use signals from indicators, which if you haven't learned yet, don't work very well, right? They don't tell you that on YouTube when they're selling those complicated indicators. But the bottom line, though, is, is that most of, the, most of the rookies out there will look at that strong move up. They'll think this is a bull market. They'll try to buy that pullback. And then think about what the stops are. Right, stops are right there. So once those stops get run, look what happens. It just blows right lower. Those are not sellers selling, those are buyers selling. Why would buyers sell? Because they're getting stopped out of their trades, right? That's why. Right? So that's the same type of pattern we're gonna look for up here. We go up, moving average comes over, right? Buyers go, all right, let's buy that pull back to the moving average, right? They get a little bit of momentum going higher. That doesn't last very long though. Usually in a bear market, we slam through, we run those stops, buyer failure into seller strength. Seller strength brings that moving average down, right? And we see that pull back right to the moving average gives a great chance for a follow-up sell. Buyer failure, seller strength, right? And of course, seller pullback. To learn more about those patterns, right? And to get a deeper dive into everything we're talking about tonight, grab that free trading course in the upper right-hand corner. The link's up there in the YouTube video, right? And come see me as a brand new client on that free trading class. Now, with that said, I want to go up, right? So one try, get up, moving average, pull back, failure, back down, right, and go. Same pattern we talk about every evening on our newsletter. What if the mark goes lower? What if we keep going lower here? Well, now we got that measured move to worry about. So rather than selling into that measured move, why don't we keep finding resistance and why don't we wait to sell right up at a resistance level, right? Instead of chasing the market lower, remember, it's a bear market. I want to sell at resistance. I don't want to sell at support. So find your resistance, and then once we get up to that resistance level, I'm looking for those buyer failures, strength sellers, right, and seller pullbacks, right, for the move back down, right, to retest that low. If things really get crazy tomorrow, prior month low, hello, 1309, we're going right into the end of the month. And as we go closer to the end of the month, we always start watching those prior month high, low, and close numbers. Right, we talked about that earlier on this week as well, right? So prior month low, if we do bloodbath tomorrow, right, probably going to be that move through the measured move down to that prior month low, bounce and do it again, right? And do it again. Use that trend line as resistance. Now, what does a buyer look for tomorrow? What does a buyer look for tomorrow? In my opinion, there are really two opportunities here to be a buyer. One would be a measured move to try into a reversal, buying that reversal. Remember, two try rule, bears try once, they try to keep going, they fail at that point, sellers are fully committed at that point, once we start running stops, right, bears become buyers, and that's why I say wait for the two try rule and then run it back up, right, that's one option for the buyers tomorrow. Another option would be a strong move higher here, moving average comes over, we pull back to the moving average, and we find a new bull channel. This is not drawn to, drawn to scale, by the way. This could be anywhere, really. Strong move up, pull back to the moving average, right? Strong move through. That could be lower, could be higher. It doesn't really matter to me. Once I see that, though, looking to buy the low, right, of that, of that channel, right? So buying opportunities only if the buyers can actually take control in tomorrow's session. Remember, it's a bear market, okay? Look back here. Look what happened when the buyers tried to buy there. Yeah, see what happens? They get smoked, right? That's what happens when you try to buy in a bear market. You end up becoming, you, be un, you end up becoming, right, the, uh, the, 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 the trap, right? You're the one fueling the move on the way back down because you're the one getting stopped out of your long positions. Gosh, it took me years to learn that. It took me years to learn that because nobody teaches that stuff. You know, most trading books, they teach you about outdated technical analysis, head and shoulders patterns. You, you, you use the stuff in textbooks, you're going to get run over, right? The reality is, is professional traders know what people read, and we just trade right against those patterns, right? Most head and shoulders patterns are nothing more than continuation patterns, deep pullbacks with continuations. All right, no time to go into that, but I'll talk more about that on your free trading class. And of course, come out and join me tomorrow on that free pass in your trade room. All right, let's keep going. How about some euro? Let's wrap things up here on the euro. Whoa.
What a move down today. Euro is bearish with a strong move off today's high all the way down to a major measured move target waiting here as support. But wait a second, wait a second. This move lower came out of a range, which means I can assume a lot of disciplined sellers weren't selling the low of that range, and they weren't able to participate in most of this move lower. This tells me that sellers are most likely waiting up at resistance levels overhead, and I got my eyes on that reversal line around 21,900. Combine that with this hidden channel coming down, right, for selling opportunities tomorrow morning. Now, most important clue here is, is this strong move. But remember, today was a range day on the euro. We had double tops, we had double bottoms, right? And so the plan today in the euro, right, was to sell the high, buy the low, use the two try rule. You can see great examples of one try, two try back in, right? One try, two try back down. Well, look what happens, right? They run through that low. Now, this looks pretty easy, right? But let's think about this for a second, right? You're a, you're, you're a range day, right? The day's a range. So are you really going to sell down here? Please say no. Please say no there, right? Because you cannot sell down there. I realize this looks really, really strong here, but you only know that in hindsight, though, right? Let's be honest with ourselves here, right? So most sellers, I would assume, right? I would assume this is fueled. Sorry about that. I would assume this is fueled by, right, buyers who got in on this strong move, right? Once they realized they were wrong, they got out. And the thing just never stopped sliding. Combine that with big news we had this morning at 8.30, as I told you yesterday, right? That 8.30 news was all coming in there. And that's what sent the price higher. So the bottom line is, is I bet, I'll bet there are a lot of real experienced traders who never get a chance to really participate in this, right? They sold off the high, right? But they could, they, you know, they, they just don't have the, they don't have the information. They don't have the proof yet to sell as the market goes lower. So what does that tell me? Well, they're not going to chase after this going lower, Right. If, if, if professional traders miss a move, they wait. Right. They don't chase after things. That's what makes them professionals. Right. They know when to allocate their capital. So I'm expecting there are a lot of sellers up here. Sorry about that. A lot of sellers up here that are probably still waiting for a chance to sell. So that's where I'm looking. I got my eye. Again, we're bearish. So I want to find levels of resistance. One great level here is on 21,900, a prior reversal line, a prior support line that I can use as resistance. At the same time, I talked about this large channel in last night's newsletter. I'm going to pop that back up. It looks beautiful there up at those highs. That will be a level of resistance. Heck, in the very short term, even this little guy will work as a level of resistance because you can look at this and say this is a trading range, right? So trading range, double bottom, up, one try, two try, buyer failure. It'll look just like this pattern right there, right? One try, two try, failure back in. And then if we go lower, then I can look for that breakout pullback right off of that low, right? Buyer failure off the high, right? Strong, what I call fake out breakout pullback off the low, get that moving average down. Again, grab the free class. You'll learn more about those right in the upper right-hand corner. All right, guys? So that's the plan if we start going range bound tomorrow. Also, two, big strong move up, pullback comes over. Buyers now try to buy. They've got resistance in their way. I'm looking for a failure into strength, right, for a move back down to retest that low, right? Buyer failure, seller strength. Again, good example right up there. Buyer failure, seller strength, right? Even got the pullback after that big move down. Usually this will go buyer failure, strength, pullback. You'll usually get that pullback a lot quicker, right? A lot earlier than this one. That's why I said this whole move down, I just I can't imagine there aren't a bunch of sellers just going, just give me the chance, man. Just, just give me a chance. Just pull back here for me. Give me a shot. I won't miss my next shot, right? But we may not pull back, right? This is obviously something's going on here right now in the Euro. What if we don't pull back? What if we keep on running lower here? If we keep running lower, I'm going to have to call this a spike in channel. Remember, you never know exactly what's going to happen, so get ready for everything, right? Price goes up, we know the plan. Price goes down, I got a plan. If I got, if we go high, if we go lower here, now remember, sell at resistance, right? Up, back down, right? Sell at resistance, don't sell at support. If we drop lower, that does not mean that you get a chance to just sell whatever, whatever you can get, right? Not if you want to make consistent profit over the long term. 
I'm not going to argue with the fact you can make money in the short term by buying high and selling low. Right? The problem is you won't get lucky like that every day forever. Eventually, you'll lose your confidence in that strategy, and then you'll be cherry-picking, and cherry-picking leads to a horrible str- – it's a, it's, a, it's a horrible psychology mess right? you'll put yourself through. I, I, I know what I'm talking about. I've blown three accounts in my career. I lost a ton of money by doing foolish things that I now help people avoid uh, every day in my trade room and in my classes here at School of Trade. So that's the plan. If we go lower, right, if we go lower, if we just dump, I've got that runner zone, right, that runner target, using that runner target. If we get that runner target there, find that low up to that high and sell right off of that high. Again, I'm always using levels of resistance, right? And the faster you get into the habit of doing that, selling at resistance, buying at support, I'll tell you right now, I remember when I was a new trader, I remember thinking I should sell at resistance, but it's just, it sounds so easy. But in the heat of the moment, waiting for price to come back to resistance in a bear market or vice versa in a bull market, it's just so much more difficult. And most of you probably already realized, right? Yeah, 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 sell at resistance, follow the trend. I, yeah, we all know that, Joe. Well, most of us know that, but we know how difficult it is to actually do that. All right, guys, so stay patient for that level of resistance tomorrow if we do run lower. What would a buy look like here? What would a buy look like? A buy might look like this, right? Double bottom, strength, pull back, strength. Remember, if they fail here, though, we're going back down. That's a sell, right? If it doesn't fail, though, we end up strength, pull back strength. I don't care what direction I trade in, guys, right? I'll gladly be a buyer here if the buyers take control, right? But I'm not going to start buying because I think it's going to go higher because I probably can't go any lower, right? Famous last words, right? I swear it can't go any lower. We're at a measured move. Oh, yes, it can. Oh, yes, it can. And in fact, once you sell it, right, once you buy it, it will go lower, right? That's how messed up this business is, right? All right, guys, I've taken up too much of your time. It's a, it's a messy business, but boy, is it amazing when it all comes together, right? Nothing better than that feeling of success of getting consistent profitability in your trade account. It's freedom, right? It is. It's freedom. And guys, I know you're working hard for that freedom that comes along with trading just as hard as I've worked over the past almost 15 years now, 10 of those years in my trade room. I want to help as much as I possibly can. That's why I have my free trial. I got a free trading class as part of my free trial. Learn all the entry patterns. Learn more about the simple technical analysis tools we talk about on our nightly newsletter. I'll shoot you an invite. Come out and join me as a guest in the trade room. And I look forward to seeing you there as a guest. If not, don't forget, I've got a beginner class, intermediate class, and an advanced class. The beginner credit towards the intermediate, the intermediate credit towards the advanced, and I've also got really flexible payment options on my advanced classes right now, which seem to be really popular these days with new clients. So call me in the office. My phone number is right there next to my ugly mug, right? Or hit me up on live support, right? Or of course, I can always post a comment in the comment section below the video on YouTube. But I have taken up way too much of your valuable time. Thanks for sticking around me here this afternoon. Have a great day tomorrow if I don't see you guys in the trade room. And don't forget to have a wonderful weekend if I don't see you guys tomorrow afternoon right with all of our clients in the trade room. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos.